Greetings and welcome to Code Quickie. And today we're going to be looking at searching for files using the Google Drive APA. Now remember to like, share, and subscribe. And most importantly, reach out to me in the comments. Always love to work with our fellow developers as we go ahead and learn about the various things offered on the Google Cloud platform, or if you want to go get certifications, or we have personal projects, business projects, always feel free, most importantly, to reach out to me in the comments. I love to help out any way we can, right? So a quick overview for using the Google Drive API. Google Drive is for your average end user likes to store their files on Google Drive. And in this lab, what we're going to be looking for is searching for files whether we want to get a list or we want to get a list of specific files, and we're going to see how we do that today. So without further ado, let's set up this lab and get right into it. So first things first, we want to go ahead and download the web application. We want our web application to show up. We want to download this web application and open up the terminal to the root folder of the Angular app. All right, so once you downloaded and run, what you also want to do is you also want to go ahead and down, download the search me. You want to actually take all these files. You want to take all these files. Let's go up the directory. We want to take all these files here in the search me folder, download it. And then what we want to go ahead and do is you want to take, and, take it and upload it into our drive like so. As you can see, I have a couple of files here from previous labs that we did, but this is good when it comes to searching for files. Next, what we wanna do is we want to serve the Angular app with this command. Then I also have the open flag here like what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm just going to head over to the application. All right. Refresh the angle app. What I'm going to do is zoom in there. That's the file icon that it's looking for. That's okay. All right. And now our app is loaded. So now what we want to go ahead and do is we want to head over to our search, to our search directive. And we want to paste out our access to our credentials here, right? And what we need for this lab, the same from similar lab, definitely want to do these labs with the service account, right? Because you do the service side, but since we're in the browser, what you want is a client ID and an API key. And just for information, we can do this with a service account in the browser. However, what we're going to need is we're going to need a JSON web token in order to get our access token. I'll try to go over that in another video. Right, so after like so, we want to head and go ahead and do, get our credentials, create an API key, an OAuth, and then we want to edit our API key. We go ahead and edit like so. We want to restrict the API key to the Google Drive API. And then for OAuth, this, what we want to go ahead and do is we actually, this is an important step. We need to actually provide the URI. So here, mine is localhost 8000. Put your local host or the domain that you're using for your production project in that URI so that you can access Drive through the OAuth client, 2.0 client. So after that, what we want to go ahead and do is we want to load up the functionality for accessing our drive SDK. And then, you know, I think about it right now, what we're going to be doing in this lab is we're going to be making up a bunch of REST API calls. So although it's kind of it it's not really needed to load up the, the sdk if you make making rest call rest api calls however why we actually want to go about doing this is because we need our access token and we use this client init in order 
to get our access token. Without, without it, we have to use the JWT library to go ahead and get that access token, which makes me think that there must be a JWT endpoint to produce an access token for um, somewhere um, somewhere being involved with this function, some sort of API call out to take a look. But back to what we're working with. So first things first, we just want to go ahead, get a list of all the files. So we're going to go into our environment and we're going to copy out this object and replace the search object like so. And now we have that code directive and we want to copy and paste this code. Right, and if you take a look closely here, it's a get request to this URL. All right, so if I head back over to the app, click search now, right? We, this is the response body. This actually comes up in the body of the request. You can see if you can take a look at that with the network, with the response, right? We see th this is the response that we get and this is the body here. Take a look there in the console instead. We see that there are 16 files. Right. And with their base properties that we get back, I'm also looking for a folder. Right. And also, you see, right, we also get folders back. So it indicates that there is a folder here. That, that there's a folder here, there's a folder here. So along with the files, we also get back the folders that are in the drive as well. That's actually very nice. That's actually very needed for us, right? And then just a quick tip, if we want to go ahead and see the, if you want to go ahead and see the parents, which, uh, which folders, that the files belong to, we can go ahead and do is fields and then give it the parents parameter, I believe. Let me go ahead and try this. We're gonna go ahead and resume the recording, right? So we see the parents, right, array of one. That means a file can have more than one owning folder. This is how things are done in Google Drive, right? So I wanna take the ID of a folder. Let's take this ID or actually search me because there's more, right? And it might not be too obvious, but we actually take a look at the, it's a multi-part.json. Take a look at this one, right? We actually take a look at the ID for its parent, we wanna see if these are equal because it could easily give us its name. We're gonna to have to go over that in another video, but we could see that it could give us the parent folder ID, right? Because the name is not the unique identifier for any of the files, like folders or files in Google Drive, um, the ID. So we actually get things done through IDs. Right, so that's just a bit of an overview about how to get all the files in your drive as well as parents. Right, so next step is that we want to go ahead and get specific files. We want to go ahead and do take the search object, go into the environment, and change up the search object. So now we are looking at only querying. Let me just go ahead and update that. Right, we go back to search directive, we copy the, the paste this code like so. Right, and now we, we want to search, go ahead and search for specific files, right? We just want to really pay attention to this parameter here, right? This this string, this string right here, right? That those fields, those fields were to get um, certain information about the file, but this is very important. And this allows us to select a certain type of file, whether it's by nine, mine type, by name, by its parent. And there's a whole, there's a lot of examples that we can go by here. And there's a whole reference on how to do this. Like this Q parameter is your query. 
All right, so let's go ahead and take a look of, about how that plays out. So basically we're asking to return all files with the mime type of GIFs. So we basically want files with GIFs. We want to, we want to get a bunch of GIFs back from our drive. We hit the search button like so, and we see that for all files, it was like a rate of 16. Now we get a rate of six back. And you can see here, they are all GIFs, all right? Now let's try to go over to the examples and see what they have for us. Files with the name, hello. Let's uh, just try to look at our drive here and just try to see if we can, if we can, let's just try multipart.json because I it should be more than one. Yeah, part.json. We'll take a look at that. Right, and we don't get we don't get this we don't get any. That's okay. Maybe that maybe I typed something out wrong. Hold on. I think what it was after the updated time. But right now we get two files, right? Same name, multipart.json. Let's try to take a look at another example, right? We want only folders. Let's see if we want just to grab only the folders. We could go ahead and update like so. Let's try to save it and run it one more time because the compiler moves actually faster than the update. So wanted folders and now look at that we get our folders like so if you head back to your drive folder one and search for so it's very nice all right and now let's take a look at another example full text contains hello Right, and then I'm just looking at these and they're a bit more as you go through projects, as you go through your projects, they, these, when these advanced examples are of use. Right, so basically when you have these queries, all these queries are the same and it's important. And this is the logic you wanna look at. You wanna look at the query term, the operator and the values, right, and the link and a link to the reference in the examples is going to be in the description. Uh, let's take a look at the reference so I can explain a bit what's going on here, right? The query, so where right, you have your query um, terms, right? So basically these are properties on the file that you're querying against. So say if you're looking at the name and the conditional is based on the name, so your query term would start first, right? Mind type, as you can see here, name, okay, these are properties on your file resource, which come up as query terms when you want to go ahead and filter in your search. Next is your operator, right? So your name contains, right? It's like a substring Java script, a substring, subster, and so on. And you can see all these comparison operators, right? So there's your, so your query term comes first, and then your query operator comes second, and then it's value you're trying to look at. It usually comes in as a string, as another string inside this string here. As you can see, asking about the mind type is, is it a folder? Is it a Google Drive folder? And so on is the name starts with multi-part, full text, and full text, if I'm looking at the indexable text, the title, the description, Oh, can I get those features in there? Start, is it is it Boolean or is it not Boolean? Is the file start or not? And so on. Okay, so there's a lot that you could do here with the query terms and it gets very granular with the reference and the examples that they give you. And another thing I wanted to talk about that's not here is the corpora. So when we're in Google Drive, what we have is 
the user corpora. That's where we are right now. So this drive that I'm in right now is the user corpora. But say, for example, if you have, if you're in a larger project or an organization, there's also domains and it goes higher, higher up. And what we have in those are a lot of files. We have a lot of files in those G Suite level drive or on drive organizations. And what we want to go ahead and do is if we want to actually look at those files, we want to do is change, we want to give it the corporate field. And we uh, provide either domain, right, the drive and all drives. So let me go ahead and try the all drives. Obviously, this is just a single drive. I'm only going to see mine. Let's just see if we could get an error or if we could get it to fail silently. So let's just, just give us that. Let's just give us that argument. Refresh. Let me save. Let me refresh. And it's interesting. Let me take it the network and see the request is pending. Searching all drives. And then we got a little error, right? Include, all right? So basically, yeah, so basically, um, right, something from all drives. This is that out of the scope of this video, but basically, that means that there's a flag, there's a flag, or there's a permissions going on before we could access all drives. But I don't think there's a permissions problem, I think it's more that it doesn't exist. This is just a simple user. So thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And always reach out to me in the comments for any questions you have, any feedback, any suggestions, any concerns that you have in your personal projects, or if you're, if you're chasing after certifications, I'd be glad to help. Thanks for watching.